Hi, I'm Steve from The Rooted Podcast, and I hope you can join me every weekday for a five-minute or less devotional word study or insight into Scripture to add to your day. Welcome to Fruit Snacks. Hey everyone, in today's Closer Look, we're going to examine a interesting way of translating the Greek phrase pistis Christu, which traditionally in most modern translations is translated as faith in Christ. But depending on how you render the Greek, it could also be translated the faith or the faithfulness of Christ. So which is it? Well, this is a somewhat old debate, but in recent years, it has popped back up and it does from time to time. Suffice it to say that it really just depends on how people have over the years decided to make their case for which way we should understand this Greek phrase in the New Testament. And a lot of them have based it on some of the more nerdy grammatical things that you can get into. Is it a subjective genitive or is it an objective genitive? And really context and other other pieces of the puzzle are going to be what helps make that decision for most people. Suffice it to say, the majority of scholars in today's modern Bible translations have sided on the translation faith in Christ. So the question we have is why does it matter? And what are they what would really be the practical difference between these two translation options? Well, on the one hand, if you look at passages like Galatians 2.16, which is a one instance of this Greek phrase, you could translate it as saying that we have been justified by our faith or our trust in Christ and not by works of the law, which seems pretty straightforward that it is our faith and trust in Jesus, in what he has done, and not in what we can do through our own works of the law, that is our justification. But what if we translate it the other way? We could say that we might be justified by the faithfulness of Christ and not by the law. So rather than the focus being on our act of faith and the direction, so to speak, of our faith, The focus instead is on the faithfulness and the actions and the works, so to speak, of Jesus himself. And so this has been an attractive way of interpreting or translating these phrases in the New Testament for some. And ultimately, there are proponents on both sides. The real question for us is, how should we understand this from a theological standpoint? Does it make any difference? Or is there a sense in which maybe both have some justification and some basis in what the Bible teaches. I think on one hand, that's probably the case because if we look at things from a bigger picture, passages like Philippians 3.9, where we could put more emphasis on Jesus's faithfulness rather than our own faith, and we could translate it that way by saying, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through or by the faithfulness of Christ. So that uh, the emphasis in this passage is on what Jesus has done, that essentially a person's work or works are necessary in order to not break the fellowship and the relationship with God. And only one person has ever done that, and that's Jesus. So he was entirely faithful, and it is his faithfulness as a human, his perfect faithfulness toward God, that is really the focus of the basis, rather, for our own justification. And I think that there's a lot to be said for that. That that lines up very nicely with a lot of other New Testament teachings. On the other hand, if we think about it as faith in Christ in these passages, the focus becomes our own trust and what is the object of that trust. So it can only be Jesus and his work. Whatever he did is 
juxtaposed to whatever we could do. And so the question, if we translate it faith in Christ, becomes our decision as people to lean solely on the work of Jesus and what he did and who he was rather than who we are and what we can do. I think in some ways there's something to be gleaned from both of these translations, but it's an interesting thing that can help us see that there's quite a lot of thought and careful decision-making that goes into translations. And so this is just one example of the kinds of decisions that Bible translators have to make as they go about constructing a version of scripture in any other language than the one it was originally written in. 